a Wikivide Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Yikraluna Plant Accident Yikraluna Sludge Spill was an industrial accident at a caustic waste reservoir chain of the Ikitemfeld Gyaraluna plant in Ica, Vesprem County, in western Hungary. On 4 October 2010, at 12.25 CEST, the northwestern corner of the dam of Reservoir No. 10 collapsed, freeing approximately 1 million cubic meters of liquid waste from red mud lakes. The mud was released as a one wave, flooding several nearby localities, including the village of Kolontara and the town of Devexa. Ten people died, and 150 people were injured. About 40 square kilometers of land were initially affected. The spill reached the Danube on 7 October 2010. It was not initially clear how the containment at the reservoir had been breached, although the accident came after a particularly wet summer in Hungary. As in other parts of Central Europe, police have seized documents from the Ikai Timfold Gear plant, although a spokesman for Mal Hungarian Aluminium, the company that operates the plant, said the last inspection of the pond had shown nothing untoward. Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban stated that the cause of the spill was presumably human error. Origin of the mud The red mud involved in the accident is a waste product of the Bayer process, which refines bauxite into a form of aluminium oxide called alumina. The mud primarily contains non-aluminium compounds present in the bauxite ore and left as residues after its refining along with sodium hydroxide used to dissolve aluminium oxide. Iron oxide. The compound from which the red color originates is the main component, but it also contains other compounds. The mud, which is highly alkaline when it is first produced, is stored in large open air ponds. It is thought that there is about 30 million tons of red mud stored around the Ikai Temfold Gya plant. According to a press release by Mal, the mud had the following chemical percentage makeup. Unlike many other mine tailings, red mud does not contain very high levels of heavy metals, although still about seven times the levels in normal soil. Analyses of the mud at Kolontar on behalf of Greenpeace showed levels of chromium 660 mg slash kg, arsenic 110 mg slash kg and mercury 1.2 mg slash kg. The Hungarian government has stated that the mud is not poisonous and the Hungarian Academy of Sciences stated that the heavy metal concentrations were not considered dangerous for the environment. This opinion was also supported by a paper published in the journal Science in October 2010. The main damages caused by the accident first arose from the high pH of the mud, which was responsible for both severe chemical burns to humans and animals and killing specimens in the rivers and in the contaminated soils. However, after dissipation of acute effects by dilution and progressive carbonation of the sodium hydroxide by CO2 from the air, the chronic toxicity of heavy metal traces is expected to be limited by their low solubility and high sorption under slightly alkaline conditions. Effects The wave of mud flooded streets in Kolonta, where seven people were confirmed dead, and Devexa, where the flow was powerful enough to move cars and vans. The cause of death of the Kolon Tar victims has not been formally confirmed. A spokesman for the National Directorate General for Disaster Management said that they had probably drowned. A further six people were still missing 24 hours after the accident. The NDGDM said that the high pH mud was considered hazardous and would cause an alkaline reaction on contact if not washed off with clean water. The mayor of Devexa said that 80-90 people had been taken to hospital with chemical burns. Peter Jacobos, a doctor in the hospital in Gyur where many of the injured had been taken, said on Magyar Televisio that it might take days for the full extent of any burns to be realized. Magyar Aluminium said that the mud was not considered to contain toxic elements according to EU standards. Initial measurements by the NDGDM showed the sludge to be extremely basic, with a pH value of 13. The waste extinguished all life in the Marsal River, and reached the Danube on 7 October, prompting countries located further down the river to develop emergency plans in response. On the 11th of October, 
The Hungarian government announced that the managing director of Mal had been arrested to be charged with criminal negligence leading to a public catastrophe. Also on the 11th, the government took control of Mal, appointing a commissioner to manage the company. The government planned to focus on compensation for the incident, job security, and identifying further locations at risk of accidents. Containment and cleanup Apart from the immediate effects of the wave of red mud, there was also concern for a possible contamination of Hungary's waterways. The Torna River runs through the affected area, and emergency workers were pouring tons of plaster into the waterway to try to bind the sludge and prevent it from continuing downstream. The Torna joins the Marsal River at Caraco, in Vas County. The Marsal joins the Raba River just above Gyur, in Gyur Moshon Chopron County, while the Raba itself joins the Danube at Gyur, the day after the accident. Environmental State Secretary Zolta Niles ordered the suspension of the alumina production at the plant and the reconstruction of the dam, the following day. The chairman of the company said in a radio interview that he would like to restart production over the weekend. The plant reopened on 15 October, with full production expected to resume by the 19th. The Hungarian government initially estimated that cleanup would take at least a year and cost tens of millions of dollars. The Hungarian government activated the EU Civil Protection Mechanism for Urgent International Assistance at 7.36 p.m. on 7 October. The European Union Monitoring and Information Centre communicated the request for expert assistance to the 30 participating countries. The former director of the MAL plant, Zoltan Baconyi, and 14 other employees were arrested over charges of negligence violations of waste management and environmental pollution on the 11th of October 2010, but were acquitted of all charges in January 2016. By the 12th of October, a secondary dam beyond the remainder of the original had been almost entirely completed, after being built to contain additional sludge that was expected to overflow after another portion of the original dam collapsed. On the 13th of October, the government nationalized the company, the bill making this possible having been passed by the parliament one day earlier. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries. Would you like to know more?